Guys, I'm Sudhant Rao from Getobyte, and this is the first video in uh, the series of physics and manufacturing. So, if you don't already know, we are running a series where you learn PCB design uh, and hardware development on Getobyte's YouTube channel. Uh, first, I suggest you go watch uh, the uh, videos on how to use KiCad as a tool. So, you, there you will learn how to actually learn the tool itself, that is KiCad, to design PCBs. In this whole playlist, uh, that is physics and manufacturing. You will understand uh, the physics behind PCBs as to like how geometry can change your uh, signal integrity, uh, you know, how to select certain materials while uh, manufacturing your PCB, what you should be considering while you are uh, designing your PCB, like what, what is the best design practice. So uh, things like that will be covered here. Notice that, uh, you know, even things like say uh, components, the, the kind of component sizes that are available online which you can purchase and that are present in the market. Apart from that, uh, you will learn a lot about uh, the very basics of what a PCB is, the manufacturing side of it as well. So, in today's video, we will learn about uh, layers in a PCB. So, there are essentially many layers um, and a lot of terminology which you should know before you jump into PCB design and start your layout. So, uh, let's get started. So the first thing uh, that you'll see here on my screen is a bunch of layers, that's a cell screen, solder mask, copper, substrate. So the first thing we'll uh, address here is uh, substrate. So uh, essentially if, if you look at any PCB, you have to uh, lay out your entire design on something. So the core material on which all of this, uh, all, of the, all of the circuit is made is called the substrate. Uh, there, there are many types of substrates, uh, like say uh, the, the most common is FR4, that's fire resistant 4. There are other uh, substrates as well, uh, you can have say a metallic substrate. So here you see, uh, it's not a dielectric but rather a metal, so it's great for heat dissipation if you're uh, having very high power application, say for example, you know, a lot of time power LEDs require uh, MCPCBs, that's uh, metallic core PCBs. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are other materials like Teflon, Rogers, uh, and many others. Uh, we'll have a sep completely separate video on core materials, which will be right after this one. Uh, but here I just want to tell, like, that there is a core material over which the whole PCB is made. So that core material, most commonly, is FR4. There are others as well, which we'll explore in another video. Uh, apart from that, you have uh, copper. So you have a copper sheet and then that sheet has been uh, modified to make the connections you want. Now uh, your PCB can have one of these sheets or multiple. So based on the number of sheets uh, that will decide, decide the layer count of a PCB. So you have just one copper sheet which you are going to make your design upon. That would be a one single layer PCB. If you have two, that's a, a, a two layer PCB. If you have multiple, then let's say a four layer, six layer, eight layer, ten layer, even twenty four layer. PCBs. So um, here you can see there is a core material here, this one, and then you have uh, something called prepreg. So uh, prepreg again is a uh, it's a dielectric. Uh, so if you have say multiple of these copper sheets, they have to be insulated from each other as well. So you have a core, then you have the sheet of copper where you are making all the connections. Then you have something called prepreg, which will insulate that from other copper sheets. So here you can see, you, you see the core, then you have uh, the metallic sheet, uh, the, met, uh, the copper foil, then you have prepreg, and then you have a, another uh, copper sheet again. So that's, uh, that, that is the scheme, that, that is essentially the stack up you'll see uh, when you look at any PCB. So if it's a multi-layer PCB, you will see prepreg, if you, it's, it's a or one layer or a two layer PCB like you can see here, uh, there is only need of one uh, core material that's the substrate that's uh, the thing you see in green here, that's FR4, uh, you will only require one and because you don't have more than say two layers of copper, you would not require prepreg because you are not insulating uh, more than two layers of copper. Coming to, um, coming to copper layers. So 
it's essentially when you say uh, make any connection on a PCB, you are what you're doing is uh, connecting copper from one point to another. Now, uh, how that uh, connection that you've made in your design is actually manufactured is that they take the core material that is FR4 as we discussed before. On top of that, they apply some adhesive. Then they put on that copper sheet. After they put on that copper sheet, they will pour some chemical over the places where you uh, want a connection. So essentially, wherever you want a connection, that solution would be applied all over your PCB. Then it will be put into another solution, which will uh, decompose the copper and take it out of uh, the rest of the PCB. So if you see here, uh, there's a resist solution over here. And then when it's etched, etching is the process where you remove copper from places you don't want it to be. So here you, if you uh, apply the resist solution on top of the copper, then put it in for etching, the copper in between is removed. So that, that's places where you don't want copper and that will be inside, that information will be inside the design you've made. So here you can see uh, the copper has been removed from those places wherever there was not a resist. So that's how actually your connections are made on a PCB. So like say if I had something here, I wanted to connect it here and uh, say for example, there were some uh, other connections uh, right uh, near it. So I would in my design make that uh, uh, clear that say I have to pour copper only here. So while they manufacture, whoever your manufacturer is, while they manufacture it, they'll have that substrate put on that sheet of copper then uh, cover it with certain material so that the places where you want the connection the, over there the copper is not removed then put your PCB into a solution where uh, the places where you don't have that resist uh, uh, solution it uh, it will remove the copper so you're only left with the connections you want so uh, talking about uh, different thicknesses of this foil uh, be because there are many applications in which PCBs can be used. So you, you can have say a simple uh, PCB which does some uh, uh, microcontroller action or say uh, it's made for just computation stuff like that. Then you can also have PCBs which are made for say high power applications. So they all, all of these require a different uh, type of thickness of this copper sheet because you have you have to, uh, in some cases you have to conduct more uh, current in some cases you have to conduct less current in some cases you want better uh, you know uh, better temperature control you don't want it to get too warm so the thickness of this copper foil is also very important we'll go into e uh, great detail on this in another video but uh, just to give you a brief that based on the amount of current that is going to flow through this copper layer you're making or manufacturing you'll have to select a thickness and we'll go through in great detail how that is done in another video. But just for now, understand that there are different thicknesses of this copper sheet that is applied on top of the substrate. Now, uh, coming to uh, what a solder mask is. So uh, now you have your PCB with the substrate, then the copper sheet where you have made all your connections. but you have places where you have to place your components and solder them. So there will be some exposed copper wherever you have to make that connection with your component so that you can solder it actually. But the rest of the places wherever copper is, where it is not supposed to be uh, exposed to the air, uh, it is going to be covered with something called solder mask. So uh, solder mask is uh, it's a polymer it's uh, meant for protecting your circuit from corrosion or in general shorts or uh, basic uh, protection during soldering. So uh, that is what solder mask is for. So if you see here, uh, solder mask comes in many colors. So essentially the color you see on PCBs, that's green, uh, you know, yellow, red, blue. These colors come from the solder mask. So solder mask is essentially for protection purposes but it is also uh, for you know uh, say you, you want to color your PCB in a different way you can do it using solder mask so while you go uh, say place your order to your manufacturer 
you can actually select which color you want based on like whatever color the manufacturer can provide. So it essentially forms a protective layer around the uh, places where you don't want copper to be exposed. So if you see here, so you see the laminate here. Uh, so essentially FR4 is a, a laminate. Laminate is a, uh, it's a laminate of fiberglass. So uh, it is it's essentially it's a material which is uh, non-conductive. So here you can see FR4 and then you can see uh, the, the, the FR4 you see it's this one that's colored uh, white yellowish and then you see uh, the copper sheet with after etching. So you see here uh, this, these are the connections you're trying to make. This is a cross section of the board actually. Then you can see this blue color. So this sheet of blue that is the solder mask. So that is going to protect the places where you don't want copper to be exposed. Here you can see there are some places where copper is exposed. So that's where you don't place the solder mask. So that is essentially what solder mask is. Uh, apart from that, there's also something very important. Uh, it's called a silk screen. So when you say have your board manufactured, you want to actually place components solder them uh, when you're in the assembly process of the of the PCB post uh, the after the PCB has been made it becomes easy to assemble things if you have some sort of marking or text to identify things so for example uh, here if you see you can see uh, these white markings say J25 J26 that's probably for a connector then you have say you know uh, this uh, shape where it's, it's shaped like crystal so it's uh, telling you See, you are supposed to place your crystal here. So it's just for uh, better human readability. Uh, if you uh, see, it's, it's essentially like a die which you place on top of the entire board. So it is easy for you to identify uh, and like actually place components and solder them. Uh, because sometimes say when you do like bigger projects, you make say a, comp uh, a PCB with say 200 components or say 500 components. It is also hard to remember which resistor you are placing where it is to be placed because there are so many uh, uh, pads that it be some, sometimes can become really, really hard to identify. So that's why we place uh, this material uh, called a silk screen. It's, it's, it's essentially a die. So that will just tell you where the components are to be placed and then it becomes much easier. Not just that, you can even say, you know, place your logo. So, you know, if you own an Arduino, you would have seen that, you know, the Arduino logo is... Uh, engraved on top of the PCB. So that's also something you can do if you're into that. I actually love that personally. Um, so that's it about uh, th that's about it for this video. Uh, in the next video we'll, uh, we'll be talking about different core materials. So in the beginning I mentioned this FR4, uh, this uh, even uh, MC PCBs where you can have it made out of copper uh, and uh, even other metals. Uh, and then there's Teflon, there's also Rogers, We'll talk about that in great detail in the next video. So, bye for now. So that's it for now. Like the video, subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to get notified for new videos and share it with your friends.